Hello everyone, welcome back to the OpenCV series where we're trying to deal with camera calibration and of course loading camera calibration back up and then using that information to view Aruco markers and then get their three-dimensional world coordinate space, uh, basically uh, axes. If you haven't already, make sure you go back and watch the rest of the videos because this is a series where we build one upon the next. In the last series, we created a save camera calibration method, as you can see right here. Now we need to load that data back in because the idea is we've calibrated our camera and now that it's been calibrated properly, we're going to load the data back in and use it to actually populate our Aruco marker information and then allow the algorithm to find our markers and move around. So let's go ahead and create in this video our load camera calibration method. So first the method is going to be called load camera calibration. It's going to return to us true or false whether or not it was actually able to load the data in. It's going to take in the name of the string. It's actually incredibly similar to this method that we created in the last one where we're going to load in the string, we're going to load in the uh, reference to a camera matrix, and we're going to load in our distance coefficients. We're going to rip that stuff out of the file that we saved and then store them in those variables. So let's start with a bool load camera calibration. Same thing as before, we need to know where that file is located. So we're going to have a name, which is a string type. Then we're going to have a reference to a matrix object, which we're going to populate with information. And then of course, the last thing is another mat object, which is going to be our distance coefficients. We're basically doing the exact opposite of what we did before. So within here, we need to open up a stream to actually grab it. So we need a file, an input file stream. So let's do if stream in stream. And of course the name, which is what we passed in, is the file that we're trying to stream and bring in information from. If this doesn't fail, if we're actually able to find the stream, then we're going to do the following. We are going to rip out the number of rows and columns that we expect to be in there. We're going to then tear apart the camera matrix from that file and load it in. And then of course, we are then going to do the distance coefficients. This is going to require a couple of for loops, but ultimately this function is very easy and simple to implement. So let's do an unsigned integer of type 16. And those are the number of rows we have. And let's do another unsigned integer of size 16. And those are the number of columns that we have. So if we come over here to our project uh, solution explorer, right click and go to open the actual file location. Down here we can see I named it I love camera calibration. If we right click and open that back up, this is what we have. So if I take a quick look at this, it actually seems like I failed to push out the rows and columns in the last video, which you can see right here. I iterate over them but I actually don't pull them in. So one thing I failed to do in the last video that I should really done properly is push out the number of rows and columns for our save camera calibration information. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Sorry about this, just one of those things you happen to miss every now and then. Outstream, once again, we're in our save camera calibration file, but we have an outstream right here that we're working with. And we're gonna push out the uh, number of rows, and we're going to put a new line in there, endl, and then we're going to do another outstream. And that's going to be the number of columns. Why am I doing this? Because when we get to the load function, I don't necessarily, I mean, yes, truly I do know the number of rows and columns I'm going to be dealing with, that's not gonna change, but I'd like to store that data away, bring it in, and then use that to iterate over all of the elements I need to be bringing in. Now that I've got that squared away, it's time for us to actually pull that information out of our file. So let's do an in stream. And we're gonna push that information into our rows. And then we'll do it again in stream. And once again, pushing that information into our columns. Next up, we need to actually create the camera matrix. So camera matrix is gonna be equal to a new mat object. Its size is gonna be what we just pulled out, our columns by our rows. 
and the type is going to be CV underscore 64F. That is a 64-bit float, which is, of course, a double. There we are. Now we're going to do two for loops. The first for loop is going to iterate over and grab all of our camera matrix values. The second for loop is going to run through and grab all of our distance coefficients. So let's do a for loop for int r for row is equal to zero. r is less than the number of rows that we have. r plus plus. And within that we're going to do another for loop for our columns for int c is equal to zero. C is less than the number of columns. And of course, my favorite, C++. Now for this, we're going to declare a dummy variable just called read or temp or whatever you want it to be. But the idea is that at the start, it's just zero. We're going to take our in stream and we're going to push that information into our double object. And then we're going to take our camera matrix and we're going to push that information in. So camera matrix dot at double, and then we want it to be at our row and our particular column that we're dealing with. And then it's equal to whatever value we happen to read in. Finally, just to make sure I didn't screw things up, I'm going to use a C out camera matrix dot at double. And the row and the column we're currently on with a new line appended on the end. This is just some safety protocol to make sure that as I'm reading this information in, I didn't screw anything up horribly. Okay, so that's our first for loop. Now it's time for us to grab our distance coefficients. To do that, we're gonna once again grab our rows and columns, which should have been saved a second time. Let's take a look and see if I actually bothered to do that last time. So here's our rows and columns there, and then here are our rows and columns there, but I did not push them out. So let's go ahead and push that information out as well and modify our save method. And that is quite literally going to be the exact same information we put up here. So let's come on up. So we have our rows and our columns, and right below that, we're gonna push out that information. So our output stream, knows our rows for the distance coefficients and our columns for the distance coefficients. Coming back down to our load camera configuration, now that we know that information is there, we can pull it back out. So let's go ahead and grab our rows and columns. Let's do in stream and push that into our rows and in stream and push that into our columns. Great. Now we can start doing our distance coefficients. Our distance coefficients which we've passed in as a reference, are going to be equal to a mat object of zeros, size rows, and size columns. And of course, once again, CV underscore 64F for our type. There we are. And then we're going to do the same thing as before, a double for loop. Rather than write it, I'm just going to copy and paste this for loop, at least part of it, the top bit of it, right here, and add in my brackets so that we're not messing anything up. There we are. Now within this, we're just going to read in those values that we need to work with. So let's do a double. Read value is going to be equal to 0.0f. Our in stream is going to be equal to our read value, because once again, it's a double, a 64 bit floating point value. And let's do distance coefficients dot at type double is going to be at our row and our column. And that's going to be equal to whatever value we happen to read in. And we do the same thing again. I'm going to see out whatever the heck these distance coefficients end up being. And that's going to be of type double and it's the row and current column we're on, and we're gonna put a new line on the end of that. Now we gotta be good people, and we need to make sure that we do a instream.close, and of course we're gonna return true, meaning we were successfully able to actually access that information. Now the last thing we're gonna do is if this whole thing failed, we're gonna return false. 
And you know what? That's all it takes to load in my camera matrix information once I've saved it out. Now, the saved file that I did in the last video is no longer valid because I did not include pushing out the rows and columns. I'm going to have to repeat all of that once again. When I do that, I'll jump back online and we'll upload the next video. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. Like if you like, dislike if you didn't. And of course, I always love when people subscribe so I know that I have a community of people continuing to follow what I'm doing. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day or night. Goodbye.